Hello and welcome. My name is Mark. This is Riffle Shuffle and Roll. And today I'm going to be showing you a brand new original game from RiffleShuffleAndRoll.com. That's called Mad Jack. It is designed by Bram Tebbit, the same designer behind the solitaire game Ricochet. If it's your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified about new games every week. Mad Jack is a trick taking card game for two players. In this game, Players are trying to capture the most cards each round. The player who captures the most cards will earn points. Now, as opposed to German Whist, where you're trying to build a hand that will win the second phase, in Mad Jack, you're able to capture cards that will earn you points during both phases. But during the second phase, there will be a row of prize cards that will allow the player who wins the trick to also win a third card. There's a few special things going on with the jacks, hence the name Mad Jack, and some very interesting rules that govern which cards must be played to the trick. So without further ado, let's dive in and learn how to play Mad Jack. You're gonna need a shortened 29 card deck, and to keep score, you can use a piece of paper and a pencil, or you can use the fives. You're going to cut a standard deck of cards down to eight up through ace in each suit, and you will need one joker. This game uses the Bauer system like in Euchre, where jacks move based on which suit is trump. Now there isn't technically a trump suit in this game, but the suit that has led to the trick or the suit of the prize card in the second phase determines which jacks are the most powerful. So if, in, if a diamond is led to the trick, or if the prize card's a diamond, then the Jack of Hearts, which is referred to as the Mad Jack in this game, becomes the second highest card uh, within the suit, and the Jack of Diamonds becomes the highest ranking card in that suit. Uh, of course, the Joker always wins. It's higher than any Jack at any time during the game. To set up for the game, first, each player should cut the deck. Whoever cuts the lowest card becomes the first dealer. That player shuffles the cards and then deals 11 cards to each player. Deal two face down to form the kitty, and the five remaining cards are used to form the prize row. This row should be face up for both players to see, and the cards should be staggered like so. The fives are used for keeping score if the players choose to use that method. A game of Mad Jack is played in two phases. The first phase is played with cards from each player's hand. The non-dealer gets to go first and lead the first trick. They may lead with any card from their hand. Our player here at the bottom of the screen leads the first trick with a king of clubs. During this first phase, the following player does not have to follow suit. If they want to win the trick, they have to play a card that is higher ranked in the suit that is led, or they can play the joker, which will automatically win the trick. If the player chooses to play off suit, it does not matter what card they play, they will lose the trick. Now that a club has been led to the trick, the jack of clubs is the highest ranked card in that suit, which this player has, and the Jack of Spades has become the Mad Jack, which the leading player actually has. Even though player two has a couple options for winning this trick, they know that they're also going to be able to win some prize cards during the second phase. Since they don't have to follow, they're gonna go ahead and play one of their lower ranking cards. So here is a good opportunity for them to throw out their Eight of Hearts. So the king of clubs, which is led, wins the trick. So player one collects the cards that they have won and places them face down near them. The trick winner gets to lead the next trick and they may play any card. The following player may follow with any card from their hand. Now that a diamond has been led to the trick, the jack of diamonds is the highest ranking card and the Jack of Hearts is the Mad Jack. Of course, we see that the Jack of Hearts is in the prize row, so that card is out of play. 
Player two plays the 10 of diamonds to the trick. They did not have to follow suit, but because they did, and because they played a higher ranking card, they win the trick. So they collect the cards, place them face down in their collection pile, and then player two gets to lead. Play like this continues for the first six tricks of the game. That will be the end of phase one. Here we are at the beginning of phase two. We're down to five cards in each player's hand, and you'll see that that coincides with the five card prize row. The rules change a little bit for phase two. This phase is must follow, meaning that players now must follow suit in the trick if they can. However, the suit that must be followed is not determined by the trick leader. Instead, it is determined by the prize card. So the prize row is staggered and the top most prize card determines the suit that is needed to be followed and to win the trick. So here at the beginning of phase two, player two gets to lead the trick. They won the last trick from phase one. So they will lead. They want to capture the prize card as well as their opponent's card. So they are gonna go ahead and play their joker. They lead the trick with the joker. Now player one must play a heart if they have it. Remember, the jack of diamonds is the mad jack for the heart suit. So they could play that, but it's not gonna do them any good. Instead, they're going to play a lower heart from their hand. The best they can do is play this king. If a player is unable to follow suit, they can play any card from their hand. And remember, the joker can be played at any time, regardless of whether or not a player can follow suit. Here, player two has won the trick, so they collect both of the trick cards and they collect the prize card. And then they get to lead. Now it is clubs that must be followed if possible. Well, this player saw that club card coming and they hung on to their jack. So they're gonna throw the big dog down right now on the trick. Player one has technically two clubs in their hand, the ace and the mad jack. That uh, mad jack might come in handy later. So they're gonna go ahead and just throw their ace out there. And the uh, jack of clubs wins the trick. It also wins the prize card. Again, that player leads. So to follow the prize card suit of diamonds, they throw out their ace. Player one throws out the jack of diamonds. They win the trick. They collect the prize card and they lead the next trick. It's a heart, they have to play their ace. Now player two cannot follow suit, so they can play any card they want. They're gonna go ahead and throw their queen of clubs. The ace of hearts wins the trick and it takes the prize card because ace is higher ranked than the 10. Now for our final trick, our prize card is a heart. The lead player does not have a heart, so they play their jack of spades. Player two also does not have a heart. They played the same suit that was led. So the jack is higher ranked than the queen. They win the trick, but they do not win the prize card. So the prize card for that trick is just discarded. The kitty cards are also discarded. Once all of the tricks in phase two have been completed, it's time to tally up your score. Now, before we go into scoring, there are a few different trick examples that I need to show you where players are either unable to follow suit from the lead card or from the prize card. So let's check those out. So during phase two, let's say the prize card is a heart. Player one did not have any hearts, so they play the king of clubs. They were unable to follow the prize card suit, so they could play any card from their hand. If player two also does not have any hearts, they must follow the lead suit. So let's pretend player two had no hearts, but they did have 
of Queen of Club. So they had to play it. Now, the king beats the queen, but as we saw in the uh, in example prior to this, they do not win the prize card. But what happens if player two did have a heart card? Well, here we are again. We have a heart card as the prize card. The king is led to the trick because player one did not have any hearts, but player two does. They have the 10 of hearts. So they play it to the trick. Not only do they win the trick because they played what could be considered the trump suit for that trick, but they also win the prize card because 10 is higher ranked than eight. So they get to collect all three cards. All right, so what if the Joker is a prize card? Well, in this case, nobody is going to win the prize card because there is no card ranked higher. And when it comes up, the player leading the trick can play any card from their hand. So we'll say player one leads the trick with an eight of spades. Now player two has to play a spade if they can. If they can't, they can play any card. If they play a king of spades, they win the trick because they beat the eight, but the joker would be discarded. But if player one leads a spade and player two does not have any spades, they may play any card. And this eight of spades actually wins the trick because player two did not follow suit. So the eight would beat the 10. And again, the joker would just be discarded. At the end of the round, each player counts up the number of cards that they captured. Whoever has captured more cards wins the round and earns points. So here player one has captured 12 cards and player two has captured 14. So player two wins the round and they will add points to their score. If a player wins by five or fewer cards, they earn one point. If they win by six to 11 cards, they earn two points. And if the player wins by capturing 12 or more cards, they earn three points for the round. So player two captured two more cards than their opponent, they add one point to their score. Play like this continues until one player reaches 10 or more points. That player is the winner. And that is Mad Jack. So, I think Bram did a really good job with this game. He created something that was easy to teach, but complex enough to, to be interesting for more than a few playthroughs. The idea of whittling down your hand to have a more effective second phase hand is a nice twist on a game like German Whist. But you also need to look at the prize row and keep those cards in mind because you might not do so well in the second phase. So with that in mind, you would need to maybe play a little more aggressively during the first phase. And of course, the way jacks jump around with every trick, it just, it makes the game exciting, a little bit of a thinker, but also light enough to teach and have people who are unfamiliar with games play and enjoy. If you wanna print off a rule book for this, you can go to riffleshuffleandroll.com and you can print it off for free. It's available for everybody. And be sure to you know, comment down below if you play the game, let us know what you think. And I've got more coming from riffleshuffleandroll.com in the future. 2022 is jam packed. Well, that is it for now. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on playing.